Hello, my name is Arlen McFarlane and I'm here with Sheila Alexandrovich at Wheaton River Gardens and we're talking about heating greenhouses with compost. Sheila, welcome. Thank you. What ingredients do you put into your compost? They're all animal based, so we keep rabbits, sheep, horse, llamas, geese, all of those manures and beddings will go into here. Uh, this time of year we often have seaweed because I've been fishing. And a little bit later this pile will also get rabbit butcherings once we get into butchering rabbits. And the one thing with compost heat is I don't have to get up at 11 o'clock at night to stoke and the heat is consistent 24-7 so there's no dips and bumps in the heat source. It was about a dozen wheelbarrows all together to fill it and I think this is number seven coming out. Is this compost all done then? Uh, it's going to go into an uh, outside pile to be used next spring. There's layers of silt that we put in. There's uh, bedding, that's probably sheep. I mean, there's so much life in there when you look at it, yeah. it is totally just hopping. Once we get our layers on, the next stage of it, once it's all built up, becomes pee duty. So then we all have uh, schedules for peeing on it and making sure it gets started well. We use three piles a year, one early spring till late spring, one late spring till summer, and now we're getting ready for our late summer to late fall. So we're gonna fill this bin with compost and heat this greenhouse up. We will, it'll heat it for another six weeks easy off of this pile today. Whatever we can find goes in, but we can always find poop. Mm -hmm. It's not an issue here. Well, we got a crop load here. Tell me what things I should think about when building a compost inside my green. The biggest thing is so that you can get at it easily. I mean, I just took a wheelbarrow in, dumped it, backed it out. Uh, if you had any kind of permanent end on this, you'd have to be shoveling. Not only shoveling in, shoveling out after. Um, the other thing is this door is all one piece and it was built so it just pops off. So again, you have room to move and room to get in and out easily. There's enough work without extra work. And what'll go on top of this? Uh, next will be a layer of seaweed. Uh, the seaweed we gather in Skagway or Haines on fishing trips. So a dry layer like this is also going to need some water. Do you turn it at all over the course? No, I'll just leave it be. Once it cools enough so that it's not boiling hot, I'll throw some worms in it and seed it with worms and then they just do their job too. I like that. Perfect. I imagine feathers are good for compost too. Oh yeah, you can buy feather meal. Really? Yep. And this pen will get clean probably three or four times over the summer. And rabbit as well. These get clean probably as we go towards the fall more often. They'll get cleaned up to once a week when we have lots of rabbits in here and they're all growing fast. In the beginning, it can be every two weeks or so. And by putting a layer of straw down, it makes it way easier to clean in the areas where they poop lots because we'll just go down to that and it'll form a layer. And then you kind of roll it up like a rug. I can add llama to this, can't I? Totally, yeah. Well, you dig all that llama. So before winter, we'll take this whole pen down. Down to this black stuff here? Yeah, the dirt. And then we will add, just keep adding bedding over the winter. And it builds up sometimes almost to the, the feeder. <laughs> Are you letting me win? Oh, you're not even racing. <laughs> and once this pile is up and cooking, our next uh, farm kind of deal is we'll start butchering rabbits, so then all the innards from all the rabbits will go into this pile as well. We'll just dig holes, put it in, bury it in, let it cook. Yeah, a real common question I get is, uh, doesn't it stink? What about bears? And I've just found that as long as you got the volume and as long as you got the variety, I've never had a bear in the yard in a compost pile. 
So how high will you build this? Uh, this pile will go probably at least a foot, a foot and a half above the sides and it'll settle. We'll top it up uh, and then a pallet goes on top. The end piece will come in here. Uh, a pallet goes on top and at this time of year all the tomatoes that were on here before will go back on. In the springtime it's good for seedlings. So a lot of seedlings spend their early days in here on top of a compost pile on top of a pallet. Because they're getting lots of heat from underneath? Yeah, it's an ideal place for them. Well, the whole idea of heating a greenhouse with compost came from years of growing on top of compost piles outside. I would take the tenderest plants, the zucchinis and cucumbers, things like that, and plant them on top of piles that had peaked outside, uh, middle of May, and it can freeze like crazy and everything's fine. And it just seemed like a no-brainer to start bringing the compost pile in. Do you have any examples of growing on compost outside of the greenhouse? Yeah, we have a couple piles in the garden we can take a look at. Let's go look. So this is a lot of the plants that came off of the pallet that will go back onto the compost pile. Oh, all these ones that are in buckets. They're all in buckets and then they'll finish up there. And we've been harvesting literally for months off of these. They're heavy producers. And yeah, they'll go back in there and be happy as clams for another month anyways. So what you've done is put a big slab of wood around and made a big box. Yep. With no bottom. No bottom. On top of the compost. Yep. Put a layer of dirt, you plant into the dirt, but then they probably grow down their roots down into the compost a bit. They do, but what you want to do is you want to have your pile peak once it hits its hottest temperature and starts to drop, that's when I put the box on. If you go earlier than that, you'll cook stuff. Yeah, the roots will get too hot and yeah. the plants will get And unhappy. by the time now that the roots make it through the dirt or into the compost, it's cooling enough that it becomes a real strong nutrient source without burning stuff. Right. So let's see if we've got any zucchini growing here. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. we've got some big ones. It's pretty hard to keep up with them. Yeah. That's for sure. It's zucchini land when the zucchinis get going. And the other thing about being outside is I don't have to deal with pollinating. There's lots of flowers about and I try to make sure there's flowers nearby all the time. So the bees do my job for me. Okay, so tell me what's growing in this uh, compost. There's marrow, there's tomatoes, there was herbs. So we built a bin with four pallets around. Each pallet was filled with dirt with a layer of burlap on the very outside. We cut slits in the burlap to tuck in uh, seedling plants and then built a compost pile in the middle, filled it up. So as the pile heated, it heated from the inside out. My one concern was that it was going to be too hot, but the dirt actually acted like a buffer zone because it wasn't like the plants were right against the compost. So it worked really well. We didn't have anything burned. You were doing the unheard of. You're growing tomatoes outside. How is that going? Good. We've had at least a dozen tomatoes ripen and get eaten off of this one. There's still a bunch more in here that are coming up. Um, it's a little tight with the zucchini. These tomato plants were, I had trouble with uh, them and I thought they weren't going to make it so I just threw them in here on a lark and they took off like crazy. And then this is marrow again, a zucchini-like plant. Oh. Oh. <laughs> this is what I fear, it's the only thing about these darn things. Oh. <laughs> Oh my goodness. That's a marrow. Oh my goodness.